If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. For part A, in order to determine the force of tension in the rope supporting the leg, what we have to realize is that the tension in the rope right here is actually going to be the same value throughout the entire length of the rope. So even though the rope that's supporting the leg is placed over here in the drawing, because the tension remains constant throughout the rope, even as it twists around the pulleys, if we find the tension in the rope over here, then we're going to actually be able to say that that's the same tension in the rope over here. So that's going to be our goal, is actually to find the tension by looking at the free body diagram of the eight kilogram object. Now the free body diagram of the eight kilogram object is relatively simple. There are only two forces acting on the object. We have the gravitational force, which is pulling down on the eight kilogram object. And then we have the tension in the rope that's pulling up on the object and supporting it. Now, because the object is not accelerating, we know that the sum of the forces is going to be equal to zero. We'll notice that the tension force is pointing upward, so we can call that positive T, and then FG is pointing downward, so that will be minus FG when we plug into the sum of the forces. Now, of course, we're trying to solve for tension, so we can add the FG over to the right-hand side. And then all we have to recall is that FG, the gravitational force, is equal to mass times the gravitational constant. The mass of the object was given as 8 kilograms, and then, of course, G is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we compute this, we get approximately 78.4 newtons for the tension in the rope that's supporting the 8 kilogram object. And once again, the tension in that rope remains the same throughout. So even though the question is asking for the force of tension in the rope that's supporting the leg, we can actually use this tension as the answer to the question. So 78.4 newtons is part A. Let's move on to part B. Now, to solve part B of the question, what we're going to do is examine the pulley and actually draw the free body diagram for the forces acting on the pulley. Now, here is the free body diagram. We're going to slow down and make sure we understand it. If we go back to the original picture and look at the pulley, we can see that the tension in the rope right here would be pulling on the pulley sort of up and to the right. And then the tension in the rope on this side of the pulley would be pointing to the right directly. Now, the leg is actually pulling on the pulley to the left, and that's the force that we've indicated with the letter F here. To understand where that force is coming from, let's not forget that the pulley is actually pulling on the foot to the right, and by Newton's third law, that means that the foot will be pulling on the pulley to the left. And so that's that force marked as F, and that's actually the force that we're trying to figure out. Remember, we already have the value of tension, so we've kept that written off on the side. We can once again use the sum of the forces equaling zero, since the pulley is not accelerating. But this time we're going to be looking at the forces in the x direction, rather than the y direction like we did in part A. We can see from the diagram that the tension that's pointing up and to the right actually has an x component that's pointing to the right. And that x component, because it's adjacent to the 70 degree angle, is going to be t times the cosine of 70. We would be using cosine again because that component is adjacent to the tension force. So it points to the right, so we can write t times the cosine of 70. We have the tension force in this part of the rope pointing directly to the right, so that's going to be plus t. And then we have the force that we're looking for pointing to the left, we can call that minus f. And then again, we're going to set that equal to zero. We can solve this equation for f by just adding f over to the right side. And then we can plug in the known value for the tension t, which we found in part a as 78.4 newtons. And when you add the left-hand terms together, you should get a force roughly equal to 105 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part b of the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Remember that you can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.